as you saw in the demonstration, the way we got current to flow is by applying a voltage um, across a conductor. So I want to describe the experimental law that tells you how that happens. So this is the law called Ohm's law. And at least until I get tired of it, I am going to put quotation marks around the law. Because Ohm's law is an exception to the fact that most of the actual laws you see in this class, they are fundamental laws. There are no exceptions. There is no exception to Gauss's law. If you ever see me say in a multiple choice question, say that this is a rare exception to Gauss's law, well, that's a false choice. Um, Ohm's law is an exception in the sense, it's not a really a law. It's a more of a something that happens commonly. So let me demonstrate to you the situation where it happens commonly and see what the law says. So I'm going to turn this back on. And for safety's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the voltage way down to zero. And this current to control knob, I'm going to turn it up so that this power supply is not going to try to limit the current. I still have these two ends connected. So there's a current flowing through this um, conductor here as soon as I, st I start applying voltage. So let's see what happens as I apply voltage. So I apply a little bit of voltage here. Let's see, when I apply about 0.5 volts of um, voltage difference from one end to the other, then I get current of 0.22 ampere. Let's keep going. Oh, where's that reflect annoying reflection coming from? Is it this? Yeah, all right. Let me get rid of this. I'm not using it right now. Okay, let's uh, try doubling the voltage. Oh, wait. I must, uh, let's try uh, doubling the voltage from 0.4 volts to, where do I look at? 0.8 volts, 0.37. Um, I think I can probably go as high as uh, 1.5. So let me, um, so, so that it's easier to see, let me go from 0.5. So at 0.5 volts, it was 0 0.22. Let's go to one volt. At one volt, it's a 0 0.44. And let's go to 1.5 volts, 0 0.66. What do you think the relationship between voltage and current is? Proportional, right? Yeah, that's what Ohm discovered, that this law holds with most conductors. Now, the reason I keep putting quotation marks around the law is that it's not universal. There will, be, uh, there will be materials that don't obey this law. But so for, um, to draw the distinction, we say for ohmic materials, as in uh, materials that obey Ohm's law, <laughs> it's sort of, uh, I mean, self-explanatory, right? And, and what ohmic material, it includes a lot of different things. It includes most conductors. And in fact, it might include all the conductors because the things that don't obey this are um, like semiconductors. And sometimes when the conductor's temperature changes a lot, then it can be considered non-ohmic in the sense that the relationship isn't strictly linear. But so for materials that obey Ohm's law, essentially most of the conductors, this relationship holds. The voltage you apply is proportional to the current that you get. So we want to go a little bit past this proportional relationship. So what do you do when you want to go beyond simply saying one quantity is proportional to another quantity? Like at the very beginning of electricity, we wanted to go beyond simply saying that um, so we could have said that electric force is proportional to charge, a product of charges divided by distance squared. But we wanted to go beyond this. We wanted to say it's equal. What did we do to make this relationship equal instead of just merely proportional? Yeah, we introduced a constant here when we are dealing with electrostatics so that we can say this is equal to this. And we'll determine the constant later. So we are gonna do the same thing here. With the Ohm's law, what we really want to say is we want to say that voltage is equal to some 
quantity involving current. So the constant of, pro of proportionality, this is what we are going to call resistance. So this is a new constant that we are introducing. It's what we call resistance. And it's a property of the object that you are dealing with. Not property of material, property of the object. I will demonstrate what I mean by that. But um, this is probably a good point to pause a little bit and talk about the unit. So the unit of voltage is in volts, right? We've talked about that at length uh, the other day. Um, unit of current, we just introduced it today. Unit of current or coulombs per second, that's in amperes. That's the un new unit of current that you just heard today. So resistance also gets its own unit. It, there's a name for it. So unit of resistance, it's called uh, ohm. That's the name of the unit because it comes from Ohm's law. And the symbol that you are going to see for Ohm is not O or capital O. It's actually capital Omega. I don't know why. I don't think we are using capital O for anything, but I guess it's too confusing with the zero. Um, so capital Omega is what we use for abbreviation of Ohm. Now, what do you think one Ohm is in terms of these other units you have seen? What is one ohm um, in terms of ampere and volt? Uh, volts per second per charge, uh, volts per second by coulombs. Okay, volts per, so why do you put volts on the numerator? Um, oh, I see, you are imagining solving this for R. You can do it that way. So if you are solving Ohm's law for R, um, take it as a, you know, defining the resistance R, then you would say R is equal to V divided by I. So the unit of Ohm would be unit of voltage, volt, divided by unit of current, ampere. So you could say that one Ohm is equal to volts per ampere. And as I said the other day, the units for electricity kind of can get complicated in the sense that there are a lot of interlocking relationships. So I would just stop here. And if you want to express it as coulombs and other basic quantities, then you can, but I won't. You can convert volts to joules and whatnot, and you can do that, I won't. Um, so, so this is the definition of resistance. This uh, Ohm's law relationship is how we define resistance of anything. But um, I want you to uh, notice something here. So resistance of this entire wire is of uh, some amount. Uh, in fact, we, I think we can actually measure it. So let me put this as some reasonable value here. Let's say, now let me put it at, let's see, where is it? I don't know if uh, I can get as high as one amp and not uh, anything bad happen. Let's just try that. All right, all right, that's good. Uh, if it gets hot, I just won't touch it. Yeah. If you start to see anything burning or glowing, tell me. Um, all right, close enough. So this piece of wire, you can say that it has resistance of, um, we, we are just measuring that there, right? So volts per current. So the resistance of that wire that you see is equal to 2.3 volts per ampere or 2.3 ohm. It's actually a pretty small resistance. Um, which makes sense, it's a just piece of wire. Now, what I am going to do is, let me turn this off first. I don't want to hurt myself. Is it hot? All right. <laughs> I'm, it, voltage wise, it's actually pretty safe. What I'm worried about is that this might have heated up and I don't want to burn myself. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, it's just still the same piece of wire, but I'm going to change my arrangement a little bit. Instead of using the entire length of wire, I'm going to use half as much length of the wire here. What do you think will have happened to the resistance? Resistance with the double or half? half yeah. yeah. So you know you have some sense of what this R means here, right? The name says resistance. It resists current, and um, you can actually you know it, the higher the R is 
the more voltage you will need to put through the same current. So this R does measure resistance to current. The higher the R is, the lower the current you have if your voltage is the same. So here, um, before I got, uh, I got one ampere to flow with 2.3 volts applied, I'm still going to be applying the same amount of voltage. Let's see how much current flows now, assuming I don't break anything. Did I break anything? All right, yeah, I'm starting to break something. So uh, 2.3 volts, it's not quite double. Um, so it's probably easier to see this if I, oh, you know what, it's actually gonna be hard. Um, as I keep saying, this is a pretty low resistance. So, um, what, so what the resistance of half wire, what it's supposed to be is half of this, 1 point, um, one point, um, approximately 1 1.2 ohm, which means, let me actually do it this way. So having turned it on, let me reduce the voltage until the current goes, uh, current goes down to one. So right now I see 1.4 instead of 1.2. And that small difference is actually amount of resistance in this wire. Because, um, um, you know, as I keep saying, this is only a piece of wire. It's not some specially made register. So I made the length of this thing half, but uh, what you have to keep in mind is that I have these other wires here. So um, there's some, something like maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.5 ohm of resistance in the rest of the system. But you kind of see here that uh, when I made the length half, the resistance went down to about a half. So when you are looking at the resistance, the whole, the quantity that we measure in ohm, it's the property of the object. It's a, a property of object. So in terms of, it's so, you know, hearing that this wire has resistance of two ohm is as useful as you hearing that this, um, this mass is, has mass of 500 grams. Good, if you want to use this to do something. But if you want to record this in a table for other engineers to look up, that's, like, that's not useful at all. Like, why do I care that this object has mass of 0 0.5 kilograms? Why do I care that this piece of wire has resistance of uh, 2 ohm? Like, I don't care all that much. So, uh, in order to describe property of material. This is made out of steel or iron. Um, you want to know maybe resistivity. Uh, you want to know the property of the iron. And there the idea you, we use is an idea called, um, the term that we use to refer to this idea is the phrase resistivity. And I, what I want to get at right now is the relationship between resistivity and resistance. So, um, what's the symbol for? A symbol for resistivity, I'm sorry, resistivity is rho. Right, that makes a lot more sense. Um, so, once again, don't confuse this with the uh, charge density uh, rho, it's just a symbol for resistivity. So, what I want to get at is some relationship between resistance R and resistivity rho. So, you guys already got at a part of it. So this is the same material. Let's say we keep its a, um, material property constant. Then what you said was that the relationship, um, this is as far as we got. So resistivity and resistance, they should be proportional in the sense that all else being the same, if the resistivity of the material is higher, maybe I use something that has higher resistivity than iron then the resistance would go up. And what you guys got it intuitively was that resistance is also proportional to the length of the material, right? Because intuitively, your intuition says that if I have a longer material, then there's more like things resisting flow of charges. Um, should that be it? Or are there other things that resistivity might depend on? 
cross-sectional area. So let me do it this way. Um, I am going to double up the cross-sectional area by doubling up the wire. So let's connect it and see what the resistance of this um, the doubled up half-length wire is. So um, what we said before was it should be about 1.2 ohm. The actual measured value was 1.4 ohm. Um, at some point, it's going to be harder and harder to measure because I'm going to get too close at the rest of the system. So, but let's just try it and see what we get. Um, turn it on. Let me, ah. Did I break anything? Okay, not yet. Um, all right, so, you know, understanding the huge errors involved in measuring here, uh, my resistivity, um, so how do I call it? Uh, let me call this resistance of half wire doubled up. Um, is about 0.8 ohm. Or you know, if you imagine the number I was telling you before, that the resistance in the rest of the system is like 0 0.4 ohm, then from this, using the same length, it went down about by half of what it was. So, so yeah, it's uh, inversely proportional to the area. The larger the cross-sectional area, the smaller the resistance. So this is the relationship between resistance and resistivity. That this is the resistance and this is the resistivity. It's a simple relationship, as in you guys could guess it almost intuitively. And this, um, but um, this will be useful for some of the homework questions because the homework question will give you some material that you are looking at and ask you what is the um, um, and ask you uh, what is the resistance of the material if you know these geometric parameters. Questions, comment. So you know this is a pretty simple law, and we are actually going to be using it a lot for uh, you know what I am calling simple law. We are actually going to be using Ohm's law a lot. This is one of the most important laws when you are dealing with the circuit. Um, it's because whenever you know voltage or current of the circuit, and resistance is usually given as some constant, then it lets you figure out the other thing. Um, I think I said at the beginning of the semester that you are going to see. A lot of ex relationships that relate three quantities together, uh, like ideal gas law did. This is one of those. It relates voltage, resistance, and current together. And you're going to use this a lot, the way you used to ideal gas a lot, whenever you're dealing the circuits. 